Enrico. Yes. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you uh, for visiting me. It was really a pleasure <laughs> to see an uh, important face in car fishing <laughs> that I used to see only in the magazine normally. So really nice to see you here. Thanks for coming in France. You, you used to fish regularly in France or first time? Uh, no, it's not the first time. Uh, I've been quite a few times in France. Mm -hmm. uh, but the last time was just one year ago when again with Mathieu we made the last video in uh, Montbel. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's been a very big, been very big lake. Big very lake, yes. Yeah. Uh, it has been a tough week last year, but I managed to land a nice common, so it was anyway a success. Okay. It was another one of the most beautiful lake I've ever seen here. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yes. Okay, so now we are in the <coughs> southern France and yeah. uh, on a, let's say, technical lake. Yeah, it's a bit different. It's a, a bit, bit different, different from uh, Montbel. To be honest, I prefer to fish this kind of water, big lake, using the boat and everything, but time to time I have to say that I don't mind to do things a little bit more technical, casting, you know, with market float yeah. and finding a spot. Uh, so sometimes I like it, but mostly Montbell style fishing is, is the one I prefer, to be honest. Okay, okay. But fishing in France is something special, as uh, you have to make, uh, let's say, a compromise between UK styles uh, of fishing and continental styles of, uh, I, I, of fishing. I think so, exactly. And I think it will be more and more like this, probably because there is quite a lot of pressure anyway in France. There's a lot of people fishing for carp. Uh, and there's a lot of people from all over Europe traveling to France because you have so many big and beautiful fish. Uh, so, like this lake you see right now, I have one guy over there, two guys over there, and another guy on my right, on my left side. So, even though it's a uh, public and uh, wide water, there is some rig in the water. So I think you need to think what you're doing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, give us some uh, advice, uh, especially on the subject of rig? What kind of, of course, rig do you of course. do you consider is the best in, a, in such a situation? This is, uh, this is the rig I'm using now. I have the leader, of course. Uh, and of course, this is a rig I use in situations like this when you have to cast. So no bait boat, no boat is purely uh, casting. So I have to consider something that works well and doesn't tangle on the during the cast, but also strong and uh, safe to, to fight with big fish in such a wild environment. So, so what I normally use in this situation, for example, is a leader. is a normal leader made with. A, this is a hollow leader. So it's, it's the same as metal core, as the metal, uh, the lead core, sorry, but without the lead inside. Okay. So it's sinking, it's more very na fast more, sinking. More natural. Or? Yes. Yeah. It's more natural and uh, I have to say that I like this because it's also more safe for the fish. Okay. If okay. you stock the line, it's much easier, the fish for the fish is much easier to get rid of the leader mm -hmm. because you see it's more flexible. So it's, the, all the bees can easily slide out of the leader. Uh, what I tend to use especially now is you see this kind of small bead mm -hmm. uh, that we just uh, released for next year which is a heavy tungsten bead yeah. that grips really well everywhere both on the leader and also in the rig to make the end sinking even faster that's something uh, quite original from the last meter yes okay. yes yeah. this is uh, you know this is this kind of float stopper let's say yeah. that many people have many mm -hmm. other company have and normally they are very small and yeah. you can only use yeah. them in the rig. Yeah. I made this version which is a very big one, you mm -hmm. see, and you can really feel you can really feel the weight. Yeah, yeah. Even yeah. though that's, that's quite heavy. Yes. Yeah. Even yeah. though it's still compact, so it doesn't compromise the casting distance or the old mechanic mm -hmm. of the rig. And when I have to cast, like now, I always use a helicopter presentation. Okay. That's my by far my favorite one. So I have this new, this is the new helicopter helichod buffer, which have a increased tube here. So this is to protect the line when you're fighting the fish mm -hmm. even more. And of course, on this side, I use another bead, which is also tungsten. Okay. That helps everything to keep uh, well stitched to the bottom. Where I put inside a little piece of uh, normal anti-tangled tube. And this because it gives really good grip, so you don't have the problem then when the rig splash into the water, this slide out, which is which will affect totally the, the function of the rig. 
Talking about the rig itself, I normally use a combi, mm -hmm. as you see. I have the Mirage Mono, which is stiff but not too much because mm -hmm. I don't like using floor carbon because I think it's too stiff for this specific presentation. Yeah. Even though I love floor carbon but not for this thing. And then you have the XC5 hook on a combi and I use the that's Super the, Snake. That's the brand new hooks yes. from, uh, from the Smith. Yes, it's the hook that we will release uh, for the season 2016. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a short shank hook with a big wire, you see it's very very strong. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, and I like to use the rig, the hair coming out just after the eye. Uh, for this specific hook, for example, I don't like to use the normal uh, line alignment sleeve. Why? Because I think they, they tend to close too much ah, okay. the okay. angle. Yeah, yeah. So what I use is just a micro uh, tail rubber that mm -hmm. is also from a new product from the last meter range, uh, which is actually a straight uh, micro tail rubber, but it gives you a little bit of angle because it follow yeah, the angle yeah, of the yeah, eye. Yeah, 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 okay. So it's still you still have a pretty wide gap open. Yeah, okay. So normally that's what I use when I have hook with a inside turn a die. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's a very aggressive hook. Yes. Yeah. As you yeah, see, like it's this. really aggressive. Yeah, yeah. And you can imagine with a tungsten, I use a tungsten yeah, paste yeah, yeah. here. So as soon as the fish pick up, yeah. you see it's already that's the pre pre hooking. Yes. Yeah. Is already on the on the bottom jaw of yeah. the fish. Yeah, yeah. And then I use this system uh, to fix to fix the boilie. Yeah. Uh, why I use this system? Because I like to change uh, bait. I like to change presentation, and I don't want to retie new rigs every, every time. time. Yeah. With this, it's quite simple because you just need an extra piece of braid or monofilament, whatever. Mm -hmm. Put it through the small ring. And then with a bait needle, and of course you do the baiting as always, as a normal. Your choice at this time, that's a snowman? It's a snowman, yeah. Okay. Because uh, I'm fishing in a pretty soft uh, bottom. It's not really soft, but it's quite soft and there's a lot of small debris. Mm -hmm. So it, I just put some extra visual uh, point on the hook bait. And what I like about this uh, solution is that you just slide the boilies into the over okay. the yeah. eye, mm -hmm. and you see it's completely solid. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So you don't risk the boilies sliding down to the hook, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. it damages the whole action. Yeah. yeah. And then when you have this, you just close. Simple knot. Just Sim a simple, simple knot. Simple knot. Yeah. Okay. You close it, and then you pull it down. Okay. And then great. before closing it, yeah. you just put the the boilie stop. Okay. So this is a very safe and and useful system because so now I have a 2014. I want to change 2020. Yeah. Then I just cut this piece and okay. I make and then I can increase the length of the of the hair and it really takes a second. Yeah. And that's very secure, even though yes. very hard casting. Yeah. It won't move. Yeah. Also because you see now I'm gonna close the stop boilie inside the knot yeah. and I normally make a second one just to be sure let me just cut out so you see you have a proper presentation yeah. and what is important again is that this boilie will never move yeah, from yeah, here. Of course. And also, the stop boil is more safe if you have crayfish, catfish, mm -hmm. you know that sometimes they destroy a little bit and then you can lose the stop boil yeah. and then you can use the bait. You can lose the bait. With this system, you will never lose the bait. You will never lose. No. Yeah, okay. So, so that's, that's pretty much. Yeah, that's strong. What, what I'm doing now, strong, technical, technical but still the concept behind all this is I think is quite simple yeah, yeah. and there's uh, how can I say there's no bullshit around it's yeah, just yeah, thing yeah. that makes sense to use yeah that's that's the best from UK style but perfect for French yes cup. yes I think so because it's a uh, is a very technical solution just increased in strength yeah let's say okay okay thanks a lot Enrico you're very welcome Stefan thank you for your time